Hi guys, my name is Meads. This is going to be a channel update. Things I've been up to for the past couple months. And I just launched at the top right there. It's a billet spins Farfly. For those curious, it's a tungsten with aluminum uh, stem. It's a really nice, uh, it's small but it's performance stuff. <laughs> It's a lot. It's a lot to say. I've actually got to the point that I'm quite familiar with tops to a certain extent, with marbles, and even in power cord. I've just woven at this uh, Cobra one. Well, there's just there's a lot of uh, power cord uh, knots out there. I've tried a few. It's actually quite fun. Yep. Anyways. This particular video is going over the things that I've collected aside from figures for the past couple of months. And uh, I've done a couple of videos in my channel regarding spinners. I still collect them. Here's one of them. This is the copper slot bar by Spinetic Spinners. I just love copper, especially when I turn them into purple or bluish purple or we call them blurple. And if you haven't uh, followed me yet on Instagram, it's the same name as I use in YouTube, Midas Lemica. And uh, you'll see a lot of cool posts about my blurple coppers. <laughs> it's just, it's, it just comes natural. I think it's the immediate too, uh, where I lived. And it, it, it kind of looks like the copper is getting flamed. Yeah. Because uh, typically it becomes a, a tan. Well, for stainless steel, it becomes tan, then you get the purple, then blue, and then it becomes uh, white. And that's actually what I've seen on the, some of the coppers I've touched uh, over like a week or so. It creates that really nice cool patina. Alright, so uh, where was I? Alright, so uh, yeah, I just want to discuss because I've been collecting figures for years now. I started in 2011 and it's just mind-blowing. Uh, I've amassed a huge collection. I've been collecting a lot of the Bandai stuff. You know, I've been building kits, collecting SH figure arts, SH monster arts, among other things. Collected Figma, collected the Polinian series, a few SIC, Metal Builds, uh, Sentinel figures, and the list goes on. And I just get burned out. There's a lot of uh, characters or design that gets that gets made, uh, uh, like the Iron Man for one. That one is heavily re well. It's the design gets made to a lot of different figure lines. As it's figure arts, Figma, a uh, Sentinel, um, even Hot Toys. <laughs> There's a lot. Of, remember that Iron Man hype? Oh man. And there's the Star Wars hype. Now, I didn't get into Mafex. Uh, I find, I find the, the quality is not uh, up to par with the uh, SH Figure Arts. I stick with SH Figure Arts, but that's a lot. Then they have the movie realization. Then you get the SH Monster Arts uh, that had the reissue or a recolor, um, like a version 2. Now, the version 2 or the. Yeah, well, the recaller, they they look a lot better. Now I have two King Ghidorahs, two Destroyers. Just uh, it looks a lot better. I think even Mothra, I have two of those. Like, oh geez, it just why? <laughs> oh man, it's just when you see, it, like, oh man, that looks a lot better. I want to get that. Yeah, just you get to the point where even though there's something new. You just get tired of it and you get to the point that you know what I want to try something different and when Spinner was around last year I gave it a shot and I really got hooked into it I think one of which I really enjoyed about Spinners here's a different one it's made of acrylic clear it's a uh, Voda made by Wusei USA one thing I really like about Spinner is the community. They're very supportive, especially towards the end of the hype. A lot of the makers really listen to their customer, the community of what they want to get made. And you get to the point where they start going with exotic metals. Really nice uh, spinners. And uh, I still I still uh, collect them. 
And I, again, I still really enjoy uh, spinners. Not as much as I used to before, but they're just something. I mean, it's it's very simple. I know some of you might think, oh, this is very silly. You're buying spinners. Well, that's a problem part of that because a lot of people have that connotation that spinners are for for the disabled or mentally challenged or stuff like that. It's unfortunately that ha that's how it was marketed, but it, there's more to it. I mean, it's kind of like how video games at one point are. You know, they're just for nerds. They're not. Now it's it's more accepted now. You know, it's yeah. Unfortunately, sometimes media kind of. <laughs> Oh, that's, that's how things are sometimes. But anyways, they're just a lot of cool uh, spinners. Um, I'm not going to go much into that because uh, oh, I want to go over other things. A friend of mine um, recommended uh, you know, getting into knives. Uh, one of which is a Kickstarter. This is made by Bastion. It's a flipper knife. It's really cool. I use this to open my packages. And uh, yeah, it's it's a really nice uh, knife. It's made uh, in a D2 steel. Nice finish, sharp. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I, it's a really nice. I actually got the the regular version of this, the bigger one. Here's another one. Uh, it has a really interesting uh, design. Uh, CRKT got this through Amazon. A friend of mine recommended this. It's a flipper knife as well. It's a interesting design there. I've cut myself before cleaning up the tape residue because you're supposed to kind of wipe out away from the knife or towards the the uh, edge and yeah, you know, try to just wipe off the tape residue. I went backwards and that's a big no. <laughs> Anyways, um. Those are the knives, uh, which are, they're, they're really essential, and that's what the, they call them uh, EDC, or everyday carry. It's just something that you have on your pocket, um, whether you're op opening packages, or you just need to cut something, and it uh, goes along with having a pen. Uh, a friend of mine made this, it's, uh, it's a really cool pen. Um, he has a pen kit, this uh, top part here, and the lower part, and it's a bolt action. It's a nice clicker too. Made of acrylic. So uh, he uh, used a late and get this thing here. It's a nice uh, it's a nice curve right there. It's actually um, kind of interesting how he made this because there's three parts to it as you can see with the aluminum uh, on each uh, end here like a disc or in the middle. Very nice uh, pattern. Quite nice. He also made uh, this uh, spin station here which I'll go over in a bit. Um, very interesting spin, ta spin station. It's actually an idea that I want made and he made it into a reality and actually there was a couple of hiccups with that. <laughs> uh, moving on, let's see what... So this is kind of hard uh, to go over because there's just so many and I do apologize uh, if you're one of the makers who've come across this video and I didn't uh, mention your name. It's just that I... there's a lot. Basically, every uh, piece here has their own maker and no, their own name. Kind of how it is with the action figures. It's really hard to remember all of those. <laughs> and just imagining my spinner collection, I've known, I know every name and maker of them. It's ridiculous. And I have hundreds of spinners. Hundreds and hundreds. Oh boy. Anyways, getting back to this. So I got myself into tops because some spinner makers make tops and it got me intrigued. Now, it makes me makes you wonder what's so special about tops? You just spin them. Well, same thing with how uh, knives are made. Um, you know, the, there's uh, just the quality it, and just the way it feels. That's kind of how it is with uh, tops as well. And uh, the one I sp spun here, this is a billet spin Farfly, like I mentioned before. It's a performance top. 
and I've spun it and it's still spinning right now. I think my record is around 13 minutes. And that's a small top. Now if I spin something like this, I think I get about 6 minutes. Let's see here. There we go. And that one has a copper, I think they call it a rotor, and an aluminum stem. The thing with tops, you want it to have a low uh, center of gravity. And you want the weight to be on the outside as much as possible. That's the copper right there. It's a denser metal. And you want a light center, which is the aluminum part. So typically you'll see that on uh, performance tops. This is the Dynamo by Kemner Designs. And I have other cool tops here as well. Uh, actually, um, yeah, there you go. Zach Cohen. Uh, he has his own uh, store called Zach's Losses Marbles. He he sells marbles, but uh, I first uh, got uh, to his store through Glass Tops since I've, I've got into them, and he offered quite a bit from different artists. He's kind of like a, I guess you could say a curator. He uh, he brings in from different artists and sells to his store, which actually is quite nice. Now this is one of the Glass Tops, and uh, it's made by one of my favorite uh, glass artists. Uh, Joshua Hamra he has a really nice uh, kind of like scales on the bottom here. Then you have a really cool, they call it dichro dichroic. Basically, it's a sparkly thing here. And the glass tops, they call it borosilate uh, glass. That's what they're made of. So it's really cool. Um, I have a few more that they made. This one here, old green. It's actually quite tall. There's also miniature ones that he've created, uh, like this one. It's one of his uh, nano tops. Really small. Or maybe you call this micro, but... No, I think nano. Really small, and it spins well. So it spins also. Now, let me actually spin that. Now, this particular one, my idea was... Like this one here, you see this? This is a par uh, parkour, uh, made of parkour. And I've used a Cobra Stitch on this one. I've actually got this idea from uh, DB Tops. They were selling this as, you know, one of the things. It's basically a shield. It prevents the top from, when you spin it, it doesn't get launched out for too long. <laughs> or it doesn't get launched uh, when you made a, a mistake. Alright, I've got to hit that. Uh, I think we're around 12 minutes here. So... Maybe I can spin here now. So uh, I put that down there. Oops. Here we go. See, it's hitting the walls, but uh, most of these lenses are concave, so it will self-center. So as you can see, you can spin it through there. But that, my idea on this one, I asked a friend, "What if we, you make something that you can raise the shields like this?" held by two screws on each side in this uh, L-shaped format. It's actually a simple idea. We raise it like that. I have another, uh, this one. This one's actually CFL reactive. It turns pink um, under light. And it turns, uh, I think, green. Well, I if I don't have it under the CFL light. Actually, let me do a... Well, that didn't really hit the whole shield, but well, yeah, what if? <laughs> then I can just lower that and it's flushed. Now, you might think that is really simple. You know, what's so special about that? If you got, if you get yourself into tops, that's actually a really cool idea. Yep. And the same thing with this one here. I mean, you spin it around. Then you can just remove this. There we go. So there's different uh, ways. Actually, I've made a different uh, pattern. This is a cobra stitch with a herringbone, or the herringbone stitch on cobra. There we go. That's a really cool pattern. I like oranges. <laughs> All right, so let's try another uh, top. This one's actually quite interesting. Uh, this one is sandblasted, uh, made by uh, Hammer as well really interesting so again uh, let's uh, raise this up I 
Now this particular lens, it's I think it's a little steep and my top tends to grab on it and tends to like to go to the edges. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, there we go. But yeah, it's just really fun. Uh, and it's actually quite relaxing. Now with tops, it's really hard to go into much details, but if you want me to just gonna go over the things I've uh, discovered, I can create a separate video for that. Yeah, there's just a lot of cool things. Here's another one, Dichroic. Really nice, it's, it's one of the tall ones. And you gotta love orange. Yeah, Zach managed to get me one of this orange one. Thank you very much. <laughs> and there's also sometimes like this spinning style. Uh, yeah, the, actually, the maker, his name is Dr. Phil, created this one. It's made of acrylic. It's actually quite interesting. Yeah, it's, it's really cool. All right, so uh, that's that. What else uh, should we talk about? Yeah, I just want to go over tops. What else to talk about tops? Sorry, I'm gonna just wing this. Oh yeah, there's more. All right, so uh, for actually for those, some of you might know this. If you're into glass art, this is actually made by one of the popular glass artists out there. This is made by Rolling's Head. And uh, to get this one is actually quite hard. Uh, it's true. Usually, when you buy glass tops or uh, the marbles, they usually go through auction. And uh, actually, the value of uh, the glass art is subjective. Basically, is this is that the right term? Basically, it's it's what you think or perceivable value. Because sometimes could be, yeah, this one is in the hundreds of dollars. And I kid you not, this is uh, actually quite expensive. And I actually got it for a good price. Now we have marbles like this that are really cool looking. And this is around $30. Same thing with that one. Actually, that one, the auction starts at $20. If, you, if nobody bid against you, you can get lucky and get it for $20 plus shipping. Then uh, you have marbles like this. Uh, this is sandblasted by Peter Boyle. Really nice. Now this is ranging about forty, fifty dollars. And you also get something like this too. Really cool. You got that vortex going on with an opal in the middle, and it just changes color depending on where you shine on it. Has a really cool backing as well with the swirls. Now this one is around a hundred dollars stuff like that then you also get that uh, this one by hot house glass really nice spiral it's actually on the when you look inside it's on the near the outer layer only it's not the full marble very interesting how they make this and it's really circular you can actually spin this yeah actually uh, the stand is not that uh, balance <laughs> one of the legs is not uh yeah i, I need to sh shim it up but yeah I've, I've actually just spun marbles and it's actually interesting that uh, they can do that too they're kind of like tops in a way well they are spherical in nature and then you have something like this as well huh and uh this is a hub nail made by peter boyle same one who made this uh, this is quite interesting. It's actually kind of, it's like one of those, like a pollen or something. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's really nice to touch. Uh, one thing I like about this one, it has a pink core, but what made me like this, the orange. It's a really cool design. <laughs> and actually, orange is really hard for a glass uh, maker. So there's another by Hot House. Got it since it's orange, and yeah, I think I've sidetracked myself to marbles. Eh, let's go with it. Here's another one by Fabian Joget. He's actually in uh, somewhere in Europe, so there's a lot of artists all over the world. 
And uh, also got some skulls made by John. I can't, I can't remember his last name, but uh, skellies. And uh, if you're curious what they are, you can check out my, again, my uh, Facebook, or no, no, my Instagram. I usually link the artists on their Instagram page, and you can inquire about them. He also made the skeleton ones on a cube, and they're orange. Gotta love orange. Not sure if I've shown this one, but uh, yeah, this actually matches this. Green and orange. And uh, you got this one here, really nice. Uh, got the like wormhole, really cool. And this was actually what pulled me into marbles just this particular design. It's just amazing. What else we got here? You also get uh, this kind of style, like here, fume. It's it's really fascinating what they can come up with. What else we got? This one here. So this one is only in that lower uh, section, but when you look at from this, it's like the it's a full thing. Quite interesting. There's also this one I just got recently. It's like a fume explosion. They have different uh, technique names that uh, they call. There's another one by Hot House. I really like uh, the artist. This one, I actually got this from Zach. And uh, you got that uh, spiral lattice inside. Really cool. All right, let's see what else I got here. Um, what else? Oh. I'm gonna show you the big marble. Some marbles, uh, they make it as big as this. This is two inch. Actually, some made it three inches. Those are huge, and they're really cool looking. Yep, really nice. <laughs> All right. What else I got here? Sorry, I just there's so many. Maybe I can create another video just talking about marbles. I, I can do that. And other gloss art. So here's another maker who creates this one. This one is actually quite cool. He doesn't have a particular name on this one. But um, I think his name is Kevin. I just kind of coined it as a twin tickles. Like a tentacle there. There's two of them. And there's an opal right here. It's an opal disc. And depending on the angle, you see red, orange, green, blue, it's just amazing. And I create a parkour, uh, it's actually a pendant. So I created a drill bite pattern here. And I just hang this. It's quite nice. <laughs> Alright, so I talk about the marbles. Although there's more to it. It's a lot more to talk about that. Now getting back to the tops. Now I've mentioned about the little guy here. Where, where did that go? Uh, there's a performance top. Uh, from the same maker, he also created this one. This is a big guy. It's called the Pandora. It's a three-piece uh, metal and It kind of makes you wonder how did he put the copper and brass in there? It's, it's just really fascinating how he put this all together. And also uh, talking about that tips here now there's different uh, contact points look at uh, ceramic tungsten carbide rubies yeah they, they even have rubies and even sapphires it's crazy <laughs> all right so let's uh, spin this one I have that's a ruby this one here it's red it's actually on both sides they also go with uh, different uh, exotic metals. This one is the reptilian, uh, Damasil reptilian, on a copper stem with uh, ruby contact points. Um, this one is uh, Makume. You got copper, brass, and uh, I think uh, nickel 
three layer quite nice then you have Damascus here which is layered titanium this one has a ruby tip also it's red then there's also coins like this one here actually this one I put a little uh, kind of like a I forgot what the other like a rhinestone that you can get from a craft store he uh, the maker this is uh, by Harpo Hound he actually uh, sets stones in there I have one of uh, like a dog tag that has that I'm just too lazy to grab it right now but um, this is a Nautilus with a Kraken or an octopus on the other side he calls this a sushi coin and there's a contact point there so this one you can actually spin that as well and this one actually spins a lot longer because there's no stem there's a lot less material or metal or weight actually in the middle so coins spins you get you can get more spin time on those yep another cool uh, top design and this one here this is by Focusworks it's called the link now this one in particular is quite amazing I do like my orange and this is all copper but um, this one is black and copper I believe but this one he calls it magma finish I'm not sure how he gets that probably put in an oven at a certain temperature and get that orange but you can turn your copper into this really nice orange unfortunately though copper patina is and even though if I put renaissance wax to protect it yeah the contact or where I'm uh, holding this it will patina every time so oh well <laughs> um let's see what else oh here's another interesting top now this is made by billet spin this is called evo now this one has uh yep a bearing in there it's actually the same bearing on most uh, spinners the r188 and he added uh, this is one of the exotic ones is zirconium which are normally uh, flame black really nice and has a uh, damastil with a brick pattern on it it's actually the first time i've seen that particular pattern it's kind of a I think it's a uh, based off the theme of a wheel it's a really nice a top actually let's give it a spin so this one you can uh, spin that then oops that's a bad spin <laughs> there we go yeah sometimes you have a bad spin it just it goes crazy uh what else yeah so there's that I've actually there's another thing that I've I've tried and uh, it's called knuckle rollers which uh, you're basically just gonna go around your fingers kind of like uh, pen flipping and it's actually it's another skill toy kind of goes along with your baglery right there so it's it's another nice um, or another interesting skill toy to check out if you haven't knuckle rollers so uh, this one is by Mamba Metals the dumbbell as they call it that's uh, like a three stump uh, it's made of uh, I think brass but uh, it's, it's been uh, I think lasered or it's probably lasered but it's, it's really nice I like it it's lightweight I've seen uh, this customized, they put some uh, glow in the dark epoxy, make it glow. Really cool. What else? Um, oh, this one. This one is the K2. It's a tungsten uh, spinner with a hollow stem. It's one of the very uh, elaborate uh, designs by Billet Spin. Yeah, if you really want to get into tops, I suggest uh, check out Billet Spin really nice uh, yeah it's it's heavy <laughs> really cool design there actually if you're getting to tops I highly recommend uh, try out this is one of the first tops I I have and I really enjoyed it this is uh, the Jefferson by NW tops really easy to spin that's the copper version uh, there's also the Yakima hop right here 
sorry I had to adjust something on the camera. Alright, so the Yakima hop right here. I guess it looks like a hop. So it's a nice spinner as well, but uh, it doesn't spin long as much as that one. And that one, uh, it looks like it's it's stopped, but it's still spinning. It looks really nice. And those are actually relatively cheap. They're about 40 and sometimes they go on sale even less. And it makes you wonder, wait, you just said you're I just spent 40 bucks on tops. That's actually the low end. <laughs> Yep, uh, tops is kind of like buying knives. There's a lot of uh, uh machine, mach well, not machining, but the, the late work. You know, the late. Uh, it's the machine that spins uh, to make them, uh, especially for the handmade ones like uh, this one. This is by Dynamic Inertia Top. I managed to get one with a Spirograph uh, uh, rotor with a copper stem. It's really nice yeah this is all late work that one though I think might have been CNC'd but uh, th there's a lot of work that went to making them and just getting them to be smooth uh, as you can see here yeah yeah that's it's just quite uh, fascinating for me what else is there yeah as much as I want to get more tops just I can't <laughs> <laughs> they they can get really expensive and there's always something new that's the thing with uh, collecting there's always something new and sometimes you just gotta pick your battles so even though uh, as much as you want to get it like uh, maybe you wait a little bit and pick the ones that really really grab your attention yeah anyway so I think that's pretty much it uh, on this oh wait wait almost forgot there's also coins I did talk about uh, this one though, the sushi coin or spinning top. But there's also this one here. Uh, there's a top maker that uh, created. Uh, it eluded my uh, mind right now. What's the name? But um, oops, making a lot of noise here. He made a Deadpool coin with on the back says maximum effort. He actually makes other ones like Spider Man. And essentially, he has a lot of other design. And again, uh, you can uh, maybe find this through my Instagram. I've linked the uh, maker. Really nice. I like it. And there's actually a lot of cool tricks that you can do with uh, this. They call this a war coin. It basically has texture. It's just something uh, you know to fidget with or to hold. Yeah, it says that there's actually a, a community with the war coins. Uh, it's a thing. There is actually a thing for war coins. <laughs> uh, what else is there to talk about? I think that's about it um, for the time being. I mean, I've talked to about a lot of things, and uh, hopefully, you've uh, learned something new on this one. There's a lot of things to collect out there, and uh, yeah, if you got any questions, uh, let me know through the comments below. Uh, for those who are not uh, aware yet, YouTube has turned off messaging. There's no more private messaging through YouTube. So I do have a Facebook page. You can also always message me there. Hopefully you have a Facebook. I know there's a majority of people out there that don't want to use uh, Facebook. You can message me through Instagram. There you go. <laughs> yes, you can message me through Instagram. Uh, I think it's probably better if you message me through there. I can respond to uh, right away sometimes on the Facebook um, that the interface doesn't really work out so well for me uh, and sometimes miss comments yeah anyways um, I think that's pretty much it I will still do figure reviews I actually been meaning to review the uh, Deadpool movie realization and just to be honest again I haven't been burned out <laughs> just trying something different and also work. Work has been... It's been crazy lately. Let me put it that way. It just It's tiring. A lot of things are happening at work. And by the time I get home, I'm just worn out. And by tomorrow, I'm like, ugh, I'm about to go to work. I usually do my reviews in the morning. I do have Sunday, Monday off. So I'm recording this through my Monday night. 
but uh, usually I, I, I get to record things in the morning and it really depends on what's happening that day <laughs> also um, another thing to add uh, some of you might be noticing there's not much toy talk uh, with uh, Type V3, Peter and Gabe uh, for those who've uh, you know, following that uh, part of that again is we, we've just been busy um, I think uh, Vince with his new work or has his work now for for a bit uh, I just our schedule doesn't really match well and again for me I've I've been burned out and don't really have much uh, to talk about or just just I don't know <laughs> I guess it's laziness in my part or I'm all our part so toy talk it might still happen but we don't know when's the next one just uh, letting you know but yeah I think that's about it again if let me know if you guys want me to share my insights about uh, marbles tops I can talk more in detail on that one um, other than what I've already talked about here I think I've shared quite a bit in this uh, video already but if you want me to just focus on one thing I can do that as well but yeah, I really enjoy collecting and I think for me when you collect you want to enjoy what you're getting and it's usually towards you want to complete a set. When you get to the point where you don't want to collect anymore or you're just like why am I buying this just to complete a set and I think that's the part where you're just hoarding and it, it kind of sucks on that feeling. <laughs> But I, I still, I'm still following a few things, and uh, just uh, to let you guys know, I really like the Deferil series lately. That is something I'm looking forward um, into getting some more. I still follow Polinia series, the manga or movie realization. That one I've, I really like. Uh, there's a few SICs like the Kamen Rider Alpha and Omega that are upcoming. They're really cool. Hoping to get those as well. What else is out there? The Dragon Ball SH figure arts. Actually, some of them are... Some upcoming ones I'm looking forward into. Uh, like uh, Mr. Satan. Uh, the new Goku. And hopefully, uh, yeah, you know, female characters. <laughs> I think there's that uh, Android 21, is it? Or something? Uh, the female looking Boo. You know, there's that too. I think, I think it's coming out. But yeah, uh, just a lot to collect. Anyways, that's it. So until then, uh, this is Meats. Thanks for watching.